Hi there, this is Aaron. Today is Sunday the 30th of March and it's day 43 on the allotment. <laughs> uh, I'm down here on Sunday today because I went off to the Edible Garden Show yesterday and uh, I do have to say a huge thank you to Sean for all the time that he spent. Uh, it was really good to chat to you. Um, there were a couple of others. Uh, I think I saw uh, the, uh, um, the guys from the allotment gardener in the distance, but uh, didn't see you to talk to, but uh, hello. Um, and I also saw uh, Mark uh, Crompton parading around, Mark Abbott Crompton, um, with his tripod in hand filming all the, the stalls. So uh, certainly lots of people were there and uh, I had fun. But uh, today we're back on the plot to put all that to good use. Well, having a look around, um, it looks as if my uh, leeks have recovered nicely from the, the battering that they got. Um, they all look to be uh, growing back quite nicely and definitely not dying off. Um, I lined the polystyrene with paper and I think that's actually done a good job because uh, it does seem to be uh, holding um, moisture well and not evaporating off. So pleased with that. Now this is the second lot of peas that I produced. If you remember I put three seeds um, into uh, each jar. Now we have got these poking through so it looks as if uh, these are coming along quite nicely. And these are their forerunners which, uh, well some of those are even looking ready to be uh, potted on and maybe even planted out. So I think I'm going to be planting peas very very soon now. You can see that one of my broad beans is starting to come through. Now I want to be careful of these because I don't want these to be ready too quickly. And so I'm not sure if there's anything I can do to slow down how broad beans grow. Um, because what I want is to uh, pick from the first lot, which I think is going to be in May, um, before I put these out. So I'm beginning to think that possibly I planted these slightly too early. But uh, we'll have to see. We'll have to see. Um, these are some more of my leeks. Um, I need to pop those on into pots very, very soon um, because those are the ones that I'm hoping are going to be the ones that get really big. Um, so uh, need to look after them. Here we've got uh, my uh, second lot of onions which I'm growing from seed. Um, I've planted those in two batches and actually the second batch is starting to come through as well. So uh, I think I'll time this well and uh, I'll be putting those out just at the point when I pull the others up that are already outside. Now this is my brassicas and yep they're definitely starting to come through. At the back uh, we've got uh, the cauliflower uh, which is mixed cauliflower and then coming down um, we've got the purple sprouting broccoli. Um, then we've got, oh gracious me I cannot remember I'll have to look this up, but certainly all of the rows um, are, have got stuff growing. Here at the front we've got the lettuce. Um, oh that's right, after there, yeah that's two rows of cabbage and then two rows of lettuce. So uh, yeah, certainly something coming through on all of those now. You can even see that actually they're starting to get some cucumbers coming through from the cucumbers that I planted. So uh, in a couple of weeks or maybe even a week that'll be ready to be potted on. Nothing yet from the celery that uh, I sprinkled on top. Um, I can't plant any more potatoes today because uh, I've forgotten to get uh, compost and bring that down with me which is really stupid. Um, but the potatoes themselves continue to chit away um, and uh, yeah I'm, I'm looking forward to uh, getting the rest of my second early's in um, which is the ania and the international kidney and uh, then it'll be waiting a little while whilst uh, I, I, I prepare to uh, plant out um, my golden wonder. Broad beans in full flower now. Now I actually caught a bunch of jackdaws hanging around here. Um, you know, like a gang of hooligans. And I suspect that it was uh, my broad beans that they're going to be after. So uh, I need to think of that. Um, I can't think of anything else that they would be after at the moment. These are my strawberries and I'm pleased to say that after the feed and uh, all the other um, chicken manure and the uh, fish blood and bone that I gave it that uh, I'm starting to see much greener leaves now. So it looks as if that's what was uh, deficient and it looks as if uh, that's done the trick. So I'll be continuing to give my strawberry plants um, a feed 
and uh, hopefully they can grow big and strong so that uh, I even maybe get some strawberries. With everything I now know um, about Kwa or Koya, um, I am absolutely positive that Chris um, and others were right that uh, the yellow leaves here on my garlic is down to a shortage of uh, magnesium which is cured with Epsom salts. The problem is for the second time I forgot to come down without the Epsom salts um, which is really stupid. Now it doesn't seem to be getting any worse and uh, the uh, seaweed feed that I gave these I think has definitely helped but uh, I do want to come back um, tomorrow uh, especially just to give these a feed of Epsom salts. Here we got my potatoes, potato bags, nothing happening yet. Didn't expect there to be, um, but uh, sort of uh, the soil inside does seem to be holding moisture without being waterlogged, which has pleased me. So uh, yeah, all going good there. My rhubarb continues to grow. Um, actually, whilst I was at the Edible Garden Show, I saw a lecture um, that uh, talked about how to water properly. And I, I must say, it was really, really interesting. Um, and uh, they mentioned rhubarb specifically. So uh, I've definitely learned something there and we will be following that advice. My red currant, looking uh, absolutely fabulous and uh, coming into life with uh, green leaves that have colour. I'm really, really pleased. It looks as if the feed that I gave them as well um, has uh, done the trick. Now, if you look here by Cheeky, this has got um, the new primer canes for the raspberries that are starting to come through. Um, and it looks as if we're going to have more this year than last year. So uh, I'm pleased about that. My white currant is also coming into life. Yeah, those are not just buds, those are now leaves. I'm really, really pleased about that as well. And this is the black currant. Not a lot happening here, is there? Um, no colour. Looks very dry, which uh, it's been watered. I just think this one was a dud. We'll have to see. One of the things that I have ordered, um, this is a soil tester. And what it does is it measures the pH balance in soil um, between acid and alkaline. Now, I'm particularly interested in this for the bed that I will be digging for my brassicas because they like a slightly alkaline soil. But it'll also be just interesting in general to see how the koya or kwa um, measures um, with and without uh, the various feeds that I've given it. And just in general, whether the ground that I've got is suitable for growing things. So uh, let's have a look and see how we get on with that. I don't know if you can see that. What I've done is I've put the meter in um, to an area which is going to be sort of uh, about root depth um, where my alliums, uh, sorry, where my brassicas go in. And uh, it's giving me a kind of neutral. It has moved a little bit and it's moved over towards the acid, but uh, not by much, so it's still in the neutral area. So I'm not sure if that means that I should be adding lime or not. But I'll look it up and I'll take readings elsewhere in the plot and uh, also see how that does. Another reading here, which is uh, more in the middle between the six and the seven, but uh, still not showing amazingly out, uh, acid soil. So uh, I think that's a good thing. Well, this is the reading from my bean bed, which is slightly off seven towards the six, about six and a half, which I think is perfect for beans. So uh, I think I've done that right by adding the manure over the winter. Okay, this is interesting because this is the lowest reading. This is actually on six. And uh, this is the bed. Um, it's just had a feed actually, uh, but it's the one that my garlic has been in. Now I've placed the, um, the rod um, down into an area where sort of the coir and uh, um, the, uh, um, the earth is mixed. So uh, I suspect this is the reason why I've got um, a magnesium deficiency, that actually this is a little bit more acid. But uh, this is a fun tool and it's interesting to see how uh, you know, the different areas where I've planted things, what the readings are coming up as. One of the things that uh, I did pick up at the Edible Garden Show was uh, it was a uh, DT Brown um, we're doing a deal where you could pick up uh, 10 strawberry plants for three pounds so I've put those into a little bag for them to uh, for the roots to soak 
prior to planting. Whilst I've been weeding out um, the uh, onion bed, I've found um, this is actually one of my overwintering carrots. Now, I mean, they're all of them very, very tiny. You can see them next to my glove. Um, and they're overgrown with weeds and they're in really claggy clay soil, so uh, I wouldn't be expecting anything. But it just goes to prove that uh, the uh, carrots themselves did do what they said. They grew over winter. Well, now that this uh, onion bed has been weeded, you can actually uh, see what's in there. And uh, you can see some of them. Yeah, that one's got a very rosy glow, so that's one of the red onions. And uh, that one is uh, probably a white one. So uh, you, you can see that, I mean, they're, they're coming along. They have survived the winter. Um, I'm going to give them a feed of some seaweed, but uh, yeah, most of them are doing well. Um, I found some of the overwintering carrots, which yeah, were just minuscule and being toppled by the, uh, by the weeds, which I've now pulled out. Um, I think the idea of overwintering carrots, originally I was, I was doing it because uh, I didn't want carrot fly and uh, onion fly. But of course it's been too early for them so far, it's kind of now that I really want that. So I think in another year what I want to do is grow the carrots in toilet roll tubes and sort of put them in about now. So leave space, um, grow them indoors so that they get a little bit bigger, put them in so that they can do the work when they need to. So uh, it's all part of the learning experience. What I've also done is plant a few more strawberries in here. Um, possibly it's overcrowded, but my plan is to basically move these on anyway. Um, these are the strawberries that I got at the Edible Garden Show, and I don't know if I'm going to pronounce this right, but they are Honioi. Honioi? Honio? Not sure. It's in the top of the screen anyway. So uh, I'll look those up. Now the strawberries have had another strawberry feed. Everything has had a feed. Um, I'm making sure that the koya um, stays um, topped up with nutrients. So uh, hopefully uh, we're going to rescue everything that's in there. And with that, that really does bring us to the end of the day. <laughs> it's after seven now and it feels great to be on the plot when it's still light, but uh, yeah, we've got a little way to go before summer. So uh, you know, I've only got a few more minutes, maybe 10, 15 minutes before the light goes. And so I've got to have everything put away. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time on the allotment. Goodbye. Mm -hmm.